Hello, uh, my name is Carl Nigi and I am the owner operator of a business called Overcoming Dyslexia, ADD, ADHD and learning disabilities in Ottawa, Canada. Um, today I'd like to talk about the creator and the founder of the Davis program and a little bit more about him, who he is and uh, what he discovered. So my job title is I'm what's known as a Davis facilitator and we get our name from the gentleman who invented the program and his full name was uh, Ronald D. Davis. And now Ron was born in 1942 in the United States and uh, quite quickly, I'm not sure how long after his birth, but he was diagnosed as a canner's baby. The term canner's baby has now been um, dropped and now people are, who are on this spectrum are called uh, autism or Asperger's or ASD and uh, so Ron is actually older than the term um, Asperger's or autism. So Ron uh, was autistic and uh, for many years um, in school he was pretty much left alone I think. Um, this, in the early years he was labelled uh, mentally retarded and uneducatable. Um, which is the way that they dealt with people uh, who were Asperger's in the 1950s and late 40s. Um, Ron um, began to himself uh, correct his own dyslexia um, when he was about 12 years old. Um, he began to work with the alphabet and learn the alphabet for himself and the way he did this was by modeling clay in the back of his garden making the shapes of the letters and asking his brothers what they were and they would tell him what they were and uh, he would say what's he and he'd point to a shape that he made and they would say well that's a B Ron or a D and he began to learn uh, the alphabet this way um, but he still uh, didn't communicate well as a child uh, didn't speak very well um, spoke in broken words not really full sentences uh, Ron apparently when you uh, when he talks about himself says that um, he was actually very embarrassed about the way he spoke as a, a young adult and as a boy and uh, was very shy because he felt very shamed about the way he spoke um, well, th so I think the schooling system essentially sort of didn't do very much with Ron um, and he was he at age 17 the note I have here he was given an IQ test and uh, basically he had an IQ of 130 which is very high and Ron has maintained an average of an IQ test of 170 throughout his life which is essentially a genius level um, and I don't know a great deal about uh, Ron's early life, so I'm sort of going to leave it there, other than he was really sort of left alone in school, treated quite badly in school, um, labelled as sort of uneducatable. But it wasn't until um, he was 17 that somebody uh, began to sort of take notice of him and say, hey, we need to teach this guy to speak in full sentences because he's got a very, very high IQ. So he's almost at genius level. So this person that everybody had been essentially not having anything to do with, um, they began to try to educate him, I'm told. And so somebody worked with speech therapy, I think. Um, so I don't know too much more about that other than uh, Ron eventually did go to college, I've been told, and studied engineering. And it was while he was at college that he learned that he was dyslexic. Um, I'm not sure if he finished college, but he found college extremely difficult because of his dyslexia. Effectively, uh, Ron had severe dyslexia, and if he looked at letters and words on a page, they would literally float off the page. Now, that doesn't happen to all dyslexics, but it happens to more severe ones and people who are sort of really taking notice of their dyslexia which Ron was. Ron was beginning, like most dyslexics and most people who are on that dyslexic learning disability spectrum, we have this moment that we realize that we can't do what people want us to do. I remember it myself um, and Ron clearly uh, started somewhere around the 10, 12 age when he started to self-correct, trying to learn the alphabet himself. Well, I'm gonna fast forward now a little bit because as I said, I don't know a great deal about his early life. Um, but in 1980, Ron was 38, and this is when he made really his big discovery or big breakthrough. He'd obviously been trying to learn to read and trying to, to participate in life um, as both a dyslexic person and an autistic person. And at the age of 38, what he realized, he had this epiphany. He realized that he could 
essentially control his dyslexia for the first time. He had a sort of an aha moment, he describes it. And the way I describe it to my little clients, the children that come to see me, is that it's almost like he found the light switch, like he could turn it off all of a sudden. He knew there were things that could turn it on, but he'd never really been able to turn it off. And he essentially um, discovered uh, a mental exercise, or I suppose you could call it a focusing technique, um, that really made him control his dyslexia and turn it off for the very first time. And he was that was in 1980, and he was 38 at the time. And what he really discovered is, and I quote here, is he found a way of quickly eliminating the perceptual distortions that he was um, experiencing as he was beginning to read. And then I think he really had something because he realized that he could read. There were gaps between the words. The words actually made sense. The letters didn't move around. They were the same size on the page. They didn't go in and out of focus. And he could actually read a whole book. And apparently that's what he did. And he said he didn't feel like a mistake all of a sudden that day. He had this very big sort of awakening um, that uh, he realized that he wasn't subhuman, he wasn't brain damaged, um, he wasn't a mistake. And um, he felt like he really felt like a human being for the first time. Um, quite quickly after that, um, in 1982, Ron um, opened the Reading Research Council with a Dr. Fatima Ali. I think, I don't know a lot about Dr. Fatima Ali. I do think that uh, Ron had had quite a lot to do with this person before and trusted this person quite a lot and helped uh, realize that Dr. Fatima Ali could help him in exploring his ideas of um, this big aha moment that he had had. So in 1982, he set up this Reading Research Council Centre, and it was really, I think, to experiment with uh, what he had discovered and how he was beginning to realise what was going on with his both his dyslexia and his autism. Um, at the Reading Research Council, of course, he experimented with himself. Um, people, the word then got out that there was this unusual gentleman doing and helping. Uh, with some unusual work, some people who were stuck in ways that couldn't get help with other people. And um, over a period of several years, he perfected uh, programs and methods of working with people that basically he ended up having a 97% success rate, which is extremely high um, if you know the success rate of uh, people trying to help people with uh, dyslexia and autism. Uh, Ron went public in 1994 with his first book, which is called The Gift of Dyslexia. This is what it looks like here. I'm sorry it's going to show up backwards. Um, that's to do with the camera I'm using. But Ron's book is called The Gift of Dyslexia, Why Some of the Smartest People Can't Read and How They Can Learn. And in this book, The Gift of Dyslexia, Ron is really talking about his big discoveries. He, Ron realized that his perceptions is of sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, these things, I'm sorry, other than taste, all of his perceptions were being altered when he had this dyslexic moment and he had found and discovered a way of essentially turning it off. He knew there were things that turned it on, reading was an obvious one, letters, words, punctuation, these were obvious things that turned it on and he realized he could turn it off almost like a light switch. Now, that's a very crude way of describing it but that's what he discovered. Um, and when he went public uh, in 94 with that book, the book is talking about those ideas and some of the corrective methods that we use as facilitators in uh, when we do programs with people. He then went on and, and applied more of his methods uh, to other conditions such as uh, ADD, ADHD, dysgraphia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, and he wrote a second book which is called the, there it is there, The Gift of Learning. And this covers uh, um, some of his other programs that we offer. So what Ron did, in essentially, to begin with, was he um, understood how his dyslexia was working from the inside out. He experimented on himself first, then began to uh, practice with people who were willing participants and had sort of tried everything else and was willing to try Ron's methods and had an extremely high success, um, success rate. 
Um, I think what Ron's real end game was to uh, really understand and overcome his autism and as he was working through uh, what other people call a learning disability on that learning disability spectrum, Ron calls this dyslexia and there are lots of terms on that spectrum we could use. Ron was also developing uh, ways of working with his uh, autism and in 2012 he published this book which is uh, Autism and the Seeds of Change. Uh, he has a co-author on this book called Abigail Marshall, who is an outstanding author in her own right and was affiliated with Ron for quite some time and has helped him to write that book. And it, that book is, isn't a, a how-to book. None of his books are really how-to books. The Gift of dys Dyslexia and the Gift of Learning are designed that if you were a parent or an adult and you were not dyslexic and you wanted to work with somebody, you could get some relief with these methods that were in this book, in these two books. Um, there are more techniques that we have as facilitators that we actually can't put in uh, those two books, the gift of dyslexia or the gift of learning. So a facilitator can sort of go beyond those books and can also do it much quicker, of course, because we've had uh, experience in using those methods. But as I said already, Ron's, I think, real uh, goal was to overcome his um, autism. And his book on autism is not actually a, a how-to book as such, it's really uh, delving deep down into Ron and who he was and sort of the mind of somebody who is autistic. Um, what's ended up happening is Ron has left a legacy behind him. He's still alive, but he has retired from the main Davis organization. Ron set up an organization that is called the Davis Dyslexia Asso um, Association Internationals, referred to as the DDAI. And that's really for the learning disability uh, ADD dyslexia spectrum. And he's also set up Davis Autism. So Ron basically had these two things going on in his life. He was both dyslexic on this dyslexic spectrum and he was also autistic on this autistic spectrum. And he basically um, looked at his own experience as a dyslexic person and looked at it really from the inside out. What people are doing when they're trying to help people with dyslexia or ADD, or if you're on this autism Asperger's spectrum, very well meaning people, kind, intelligent people are using observational science. They're looking from the outside in. And looking from the outside in, you can only get so far where it comes to people's minds and their own personal experience. My own experience as a dyslexic and people helping me was that, again, they could only get so far with the method that they were using because they did not have this unique experience of being dyslexic and what that was like for me in my mind and what was going on when I was trying to learn to read. So this is why I say that um, people who are trying to help dyslexic people um, or people on the Asperger's spectrum, what they're doing is again using this observational methods where they're looking from the outside at somebody and they're trying to help them from the outside in. What makes Ron truly genius and brilliant in every respect is that he could self-observe his own dyslexia. He managed to self-reflect on his own thinking and to a finite degree and almost pick it apart and, and look at it from the inside out. So what he's developed over decades is a way of working with people who have either this learning disability uh, dyslexia spectrum or the autism Asperger's spectrum and a way of providing programs so they can understand it themselves from the inside out. So the way I like to describe this to clients that come to see me is this is um, basically um, dyslexia thinking from the point of view of somebody who has dyslexia or ADD or ADHD and what really works best for our type of thinking. And that's really what Ron is saying. Ron is saying, uh, not waiting to pick an argument or a fight with anybody. He's really saying, look, um, I have these problems. I'm both uh, severely dyslexic and autistic, and this is what I have found works best for my dyslexia and my autism. And if you want to participate fully in life, then this is what you can do. You can do either one of these programs, depending on what problems or difficulties you're having. 
So what Ron has established is a network of facilitators like myself who offer these services around the world. There are really two types of facilitators, one who are on this learning disability dyslexia spectrum and another type that are on the autism Asperger's spectrum. Now, the, generally speaking, the people that are on the dis, uh, autism spectrum uh, facilitators, they usually are also dyslexia facilitators as well. But there needs to be that distinction that there's sort of two types of facilitators. So Ron has left, um, uh, has managed to build a a big worldwide organization. Uh, the Davis program is offered, I'm told, in uh, 30 languages in 40 different countries around the world. And there are very, there are a lot of very dedicated uh, facilitators like myself um, in many countries offering these services. So I think that's almost it other than to say if you are an educator yourself, um, please go and check out this material. You'll find it very helpful for people that you're trying to help. Um, you could even train as a facilitator yourself. Uh, if you're a parent of a facilitator of a child or, a, or an adult who's and you're trying to help them, then the Davis program is unique in all respects. If you are a dyslexic yourself, I also suggest that you check this out. Or if you're on the autism spectrum, I suggest you check this out. Uh, for me, um, as a dyslexic person myself who had lots of labels, I had about six labels that could be attached to me. I was dyslexic, um, I was dysgraphic, uh, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, also ADHD, uh, on the ADHD spectrum. Um, I have found that the Davis programs are quite simply the easiest, <laughs> the simplest, uh, the quickest, and quite frankly, the least expensive way of dealing with these difficulties that we can have and these challenges. And for me personally, what I desperately wanted was somebody that could um, really help me to understand how I was stuck and how I could get myself unstuck. And that's all I really wanted as a person. And that's why I became a Davis facilitator. Once I realized what it was doing for myself, I realized I just could not sit by and help not help other dyslexics, other people who were stuck, who were having similar issues to me. And um, I did not want them to live the life I had led, so I wanted to be able to help. Um, I truly think that Ron Davis is a genius. He has uh, gone places with his own thinking and with his own understanding far beyond where anybody else has gone. I think in generations to come, people will look back at Ron and the Davis programs and go, my God, it's so obvious, why didn't we think of it? In my training, I was lucky enough to have some training from Ron and uh, he pointed out in a, a, a quiet moment when he was talking to a few of us that when you truly understand the Davis programs and what they are, you realize that it changes not only dyslexia, it doesn't also just change autism and Asperger's, it actually uh, could potentially change the way we think and practice mental health. Um, and I think that may be even one of Ron's big goals. Um, so if you found this uh, video helpful, please like, share, subscribe. Um, this is going to be on Facebook and also YouTube. Um, there are uh, web addresses to my website below, which is Overcoming Dyslexia. Uh, so you can very welcome to fire a question off to me. I'll do my best to answer it. If you are anywhere outside of Ottawa, Canada, then I would encourage you to go to dyslexia.com and you'll be able to find a provider there if you're on the dyslexia spectrum. If you are interested in the autism Asperger's, um, then go to Davis Autism. There's gonna be a link below there. So please like, subscribe, thumbs up, all of that good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.